as I tell them every day, your brains are just as good as any kid from Palm Beach, Florida or Beverly Hills. Just because you happen to be here in the inner city, what's considered, you know, the gang capital of California, doesn't make your brains any less. And I think these classes are a chance for them to really open up. And oftentimes, their passion is far greater than what I've seen in more affluent areas because they're touched more with the poverty. They're touched more with the world issues because there are homeless people on these streets. There's people who are wondering tonight, where are they going to get their next meal? I want this course to open up the lives of the students because sometimes their lives don't really offer them a view of the world that a kid in a more affluent area might get. Their parents often only have a second or third grade education, may not speak English, uh, may both be working. So when they sign up for this little ceramics course, they come in thinking they're just going to play with clay, but it turns out they really get an exposure to aesthetics, to criticism of art. They go all the way through art history from ancient Egypt right up to modern art and they not only learn about the art and how to look at it, but a little about the cultures, the philosophy, the economy, uh, the government. So this is not just going abstractly to some other period in time. Everything that's touched in this class, I try to relate directly to their life, so it touches them. So when they walk home, they look at the world differently, they touch the world differently, they savor it differently. Now if you say, but I don't, there's no way I know how to draw, make a car. We're not gonna paint this. We'll actually build the little front of a car sticking out. Oh, okay. And if you don't know how to draw the cards, you, you understand Gothic lettering? Yeah. Okay. For my first years of teaching, I taught uh, ceramics and art. I still would love to teach art, but right now I seem to be 100% ceramics. And what's happened with the introduction of discipline-based art education is that the richness of the ceramic experience, the production experience, has just made quantum leaps because suddenly they're making aesthetic choices about the colors. When we talk about glazing a pot, it's not just what colors do you want. Well, I want a cool feeling now. You'll hear the vocabulary of art criticism. I want it to be expressive. They'll use the aesthetic stances. I want a realistic approach. No, I like the formalistic Indian approach. Or I want to capture the feeling that happened during the Renaissance. And so they're using images and they're using vocabulary for, so that their production expands greatly. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, today, we're going to go back to aesthetics. Now, we've touched aesthetics before, and we're going to return to it with a new thing called an aesthetic experience. Hoy vamos a aprender acerca de una experiencias aesthéticos. Si usted recuerde, recuerden, hay muchos árboles, árboles de aprendiendo. There's many trees of learning, if you remember. Every tree has a lot of branches. A lot of time the branches sound like your courses, biology, chemistry, physics for the science tree. But there was one strange tree that we learned about called philosophy. And philosophy was weird because this tree of learning only has one question. What is this question? Does somebody want to offer up what's the one question that this tree asks? What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? And if you remember, there's no real answer to that. There's only your opinion. So for each one of you, it's probably a different, a different thing. What is the meaning of life? And we went over some of those possibilities that if your life was into pleasure of the body, that's called hedonism. Materialism, trying to get a lot of money and power. Um, so for some of you, the purpose of life is to serve God and that's fine. None of these are right or wrong. These are simply some of the purposes of life that people have chosen for themselves. Now, on this tree, there are many branches. And for example, one of the branches is ethics. Hay muchos ramas en esta árbol. Por ejemplo, uno se llama éticos, que es bien, que es malo, what's good, what's bad. If you watch television, every night ethics is on television. They have questions like, is it right to have an abortion? Is it wrong? There is no answer. It's part of philosophy. What's right and wrong? For some of you, abortion is wrong. For some of you, abortion is the woman's choice. Um, ethical questions. Is, is suicide okay? People, if you had AIDS or you were dying of a terrible disease, can you commit suicide? That's an ethical question, part of philosophy. Uh, for art, what is art? Same thing, there is no answer, but you, you did some homework on what is art, and you came back with three possible answers for the ingredients of art. Would somebody new like to share that one? A skill, creativity, emotion. Beautiful. Skill, 
creativity, and emotion. So the, these are aesthetic questions. Aesthetic questions means what is art, what is beauty. Uh, today, oh, one more thing we've hit is we've hit the aesthetic stances. That is the position of the artist, whether it's realism, formalism, expressive and sensory. Uh, that's what attitude does the artist have in his mind? Well, today we're moving on to a new thing called an aesthetic experience. Every day you do hundreds of things. You, you go to the gym and you work out with weights, or you walk to school, you comb your hair, you wash the dishes. These are practical experiences. They have a purpose. But there's another type of experience called an aesthetic experience, one just for beauty. Just when you, do, when you go look at a sunset and you look and the sun's going down and you go, oh, God, that's pretty. That's aesthetics. When you look at a painting and you look up and you say, oh, that's so great looking. No purpose except just the beauty. That's an aesthetic experience. What you're going to learn today is, is how to take a practical experience and turning it into an aesthetic experience, one of beauty. All it takes is looking for the beauty. Let me demonstrate. I have a cup of coffee here. I stop and I get my coffee in the morning. I put a little bit of cream in it for flavor. True, the flavor is aesthetics, maybe. You know, what tastes good to me. But pouring the cream isn't really aesthetics. That's just, I need a little more cream. That tastes pretty good. That's a practical experience. But watch the same experience looking for the aesthetics. Let me take some coffee. This time, I'm going to pour the cream in the coffee, but I'm going to look for the beauty. Not for the taste, not for anything, just for the beauty. Now, you didn't see what I saw, but for me, those four seconds were an aesthetic experience. To me, it was quite beautiful. I'm going to try to capture this for you in words, as the cream fell to the bottom, it bounced from the bottom of the cup into big white voluminous clouds which twisted and turned through a dark chocolate sky like a stormy night. And then slowly the white clouds faded, dissipated and floated like stars lost in a distant galaxy. Now if those words kind of capture that, you say, you saw that harsh? And I go, yeah, four seconds, right in that cup. And you go, ooh, that's kind of nice. Then I've captured, I've kind of trapped an aesthetic experience for you and let you see it. Now, you ha you've all had these. You have these probably every day. You just don't know about it. Let's say your dad says, Arturo, go out and water the lawn. So he goes out and he turns on the hose and he's putting some water on the lawn. The practical reason is put water on the lawn so it doesn't die. So here's Arturo out there, shh, shh, shh. puts his finger over the hose and he forms a mist. And as he's forming this mist, all of a sudden in the mist is a little rainbow. And he's sitting there and he goes, ooh, oh man, wow. You know, he's spraying the next door neighbor's house and he's all over his dad's car, which he just washed three seconds ago, you know. And your dad walks out and goes, Arturo, Arturo, Arturo. And on the third, he goes, he jumps, he goes, what? He goes, weren't you listening to me? He goes, no, man. He didn't listen because he was lost in an aesthetic experience. And there's no time. You don't think about time. He's just tripping out on the beauty of the little rainbow. That is an aesthetic experience. Now, your job is going to be to take some everyday experiences and change them into aesthetic experiences. Here's some examples. Some students from last year. Here's a guy working out at the gym. He's pumping iron. There's a, there's a drop of sweat on his chest. He says, I look into the drop of sweat and I see a little miniature rainbow trapped inside. And as the rainbow dribbles down his chest, I can see the little rainbow bouncing and wiggling, trying to free itself until the sweat hits the carpet, explodes and releases its prisoner of light. Real, real simple. When I wax our table, I spray on the spray, spray wax. It hits like soft white snow or powdered sugar on a cake. Very, very little simple things. 
a regular experience changed into an aesthetic one. Now you can do the same with a painting, like this painting, which we've seen before. Uh, who wants to show a little bit of memory here with identifying this? Anybody? Right. Okay, another picture is Niagara Falls, and Good. the artist is Frederick Church. Beautiful. Okay, now we can do a practical scan on this, and it might sound, you know, something like this. This is Niagara Falls by Frederick Church, painted in 1857, oil on canvas. Uh, the aesthetic stance is realism. The palette of colors is cool, and the textures are realistic and three-dimensional. Most of the forms are organic. Now, that's a practical scan. Now, listen to an aesthetic scan. I'll just set this thing down. I see turquoise icy waters rushing towards a giant cauldron, which is filled with a white mist that rises to touch a dark and ominous foreboding gray sky, broken by a single golden rainbow, which dives into this cauldron of mist like a ray of hope for the future. And suddenly think, ooh, that's really pretty aesthetically moving painting. Mr. Harsh is teaching us about beauty. We shouldn't just look at things and think, oh, that's pretty because we see it on TV and they tell us it's pretty. We can look at things in depth. 99% of what I've learned about teaching art and especially discipline-based art education came from the teaching. My greatest teacher is the kids. Every day when they say, but I can't do this, I don't understand this, then I go into my brain and I think, how can I break this down into such simple steps that they will finally go, ooh, now I have it. What we're going to do now is, in front of you, you each have a little pan of water. I'm going to come around and I'm going to put some red dye into that and you're going to have maybe three seconds to react and you're going to see a little <clears throat> you're going to see a little reaction of dye to water I want you to try to capture on the little piece of blue paper what you see one sentence just a simple sentence now if you say it was pretty that doesn't really do it so describe use go to your English class mind use adjectives adverbs Use similes. If you remember similes from your English class, the corn blows like waves on an ocean. So you're only going to have about three section, seconds to see it, so just watch that. The history in English classes and math classes and the more basic curriculum opens the students up to reading and writing and arithmetic, but the art classes do an extra job in that it, I think it touches more of their right brain side, their soulful side, more of the daydreaming side and the artistic side and that allows them to take what they've pulled from history and English and math and give it a turn of emotion which brings it to life more. Ooh, spectacular, spectacular. Fantastico, incredible. You can start writing your reactions right off. Your little pot wet itself. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Whoa! Doesn't have to be long. It can be very short if you choose the words well. Okay, that should give you enough time to get a, a reaction of what you saw on paper. Um, doesn't matter if they're short or long. If a few of you are brave enough to offer these up, I'd love to hear you read them to the class. If you feel a little scared, I'll be glad to read them for you. Do we have a brave soul out there who goes first? Okay, why don't you share for us? As the drop falls in the water, it looks like an explosion, but then as it fades away, it looks like clouds rot rotating through the sky. Nice, nice. So at first, and most of you saw it, it went boom, like an explosion. And then all of a sudden, it just softly drifts. So he changes from explosion to clouds in the sky. I like both of those little similes. Somebody else like to offer up? Your little gem? Come on, be brave, folks. Sure, come on, Kara. Uh, the clear crystal water looks to me like the landscape the native Indians love to live in. Um, the land that was given to them from the Great Spirit. As the dye drops, Columbus lands. The Europeans not only destroy, but pollute their beautiful, their beautiful land with diseases. The red dye spread throughout the pure soul innocent Native Americans. 
The red dye destroys their people, their tribes, their culture, their beliefs. In good hearts, these beliefs will never die. Oh, that is absolutely exquisite. Now, that's reading a lot into this reaction, but that's showing her own knowledge. I mean, and that ties right into what we've just been going over about the Native Americans and the, the Indians in Mexico, of the beautiful philosophies, the holism, the holistic feelings. And the clear water is the purity of the Indians, and the red is the destruction of people like Cortez, who have brought the European culture and have, have hurt. That's, that's almost a political statement, but seen here, that's, that's beautiful. Very well put. And I, you know this was more of a reaction than just the water dropped, you know. You could almost see tears coming to your eyes. So it, it touched your heart and it touched mine too. Now, it doesn't have to be that long. I'd love to hear a few more reactions. Somebody else here? As, a, as the red drop falls into the water, it strikes and instantly a vicious sea monster evolves. His reign of terror, however, is short because he dissipates into an inactive red pillow. Oh, I love this. I mean, a sea monster. And if you looked as it went, whoosh, if you've seen uh, a sea anemone or you've seen an octopus or a squid moving, it's this, oom, mm, oom. Mm. And the red kind of does that like a sea monster. But, and beautiful word, dissipates. The red dissipates and fades. Great chance to use good, good adjectives and adverbs. I know there must be 20 of these out there that are gorgeous that you haven't shared, but you all have a chance to share these because now what you're going to do is you're going to go home and you have a whole week. And in the week that comes, I want you to take two experiences and put them in aesthetic terms, like the man working out at the gym with the weights or combing your hair, washing your hands. So in la semana que viene, va a su casa, toca dos experiencias practicales y cambiar estos experiencias entre experiencias estéticos con este tipo de palabras. So you want to bring in two little experiences. Third, you're going to capture a painting. You pull one out of here, take a little painting. Example, Georgia O'Keeffe's flower. And this is pretty close to the same one. She does a lot of red flowers. This one's very simple. A delightful shape tiny drops of black and red paint come together and spread out like a flame of fire. She's seen flames there. It's actually a, a plant. Down below, she has two experiences, combing my hair, baking a cake. Put in a simple sentence. I'll come around with an envelope now, reach in, let fate guide your hand for a painting. I'll stay here till 5.30 or 6.30 at night, and when I go home, I'm kicking kids out of the room. People say, oh, the kids in the inner cities can't learn. Their passion is here, and you simply have to open up your heart to them, and they will come by. They'll wait at the door at 6.30 in the morning for me when I get here and say, excuse me, uh, you're about 10 minutes late, Mr. Harsh. Like, I've seen some gang members coming in here, right? Instead of, like, staying outside in the street, they'll be in here working in their projects in here. It seems like... You know, this how brought them in here instead of being out there on the streets. Here we go. Look at this boredom. But watch. When he sees his painting, his face will light up. Why? He can't even control himself. Tears stream down his cheeks. Sergio goes into a magical state. Oh, look at the disappointment. Poor kid. But you'll find the beauty in it. You'll find the aesthetics. Art. To me, it has helped me because before I didn't think I had a talent, but now I'm starting to realize that maybe I do, I can create things. You know, like with clay, I've created a cup and I'm doing a, a pot. And from people's opinions, they say it's pretty good. So it's helping understand myself. Okay, you all have your little pieces of paper, hopefully like your paintings. So you, are there questions? Hay preguntas para la tarea? Questions for the homework? If not, you can put these little things up. So you can get up and get to work on clay a little bit, and I'll be here tonight till about 5.30 or 6. I think if it wasn't for my wife, I would never leave this room. I'd sleep on these tables, I'd bathe in that sink. And the reason is, I don't love this place, I adore this place. And other teachers say, oh, thank God it's Friday. And I go, no, thank God it's Monday so I can come back with these kids. A lot of kids will walk out that door in June and they'll look at me and they'll say, you know, Harsh, thanks for the art history. And 
I'm getting really emotional. Wow. They'll say, thank you for the art history, thank you for the production, thank you for the projects, but the thing you taught me most of all is how to love myself. You taught me to finally learn that I am a person that's worthwhile and I can do anything in this world if I want to. And that's what the gift of art is, to open your eyes, not only to the world, but to your own potential, which is just infinite.